so good to see you this morning. I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm so glad that you're here. This is a fairly a new soul to our church entitled You Are Holy. It's repetitive. Men, you sing with us, Donnie and I, and the ladies repeat. Here we go. You are holy. You are mighty. That's what we need to do. Amen. Church is live our life under our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning. We want to continue to exalt our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what this song is about. Hosanna. Just lifting our voices to him. We invite you to worship with this morning. Praise his rising eyes are turned. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. You make us new 
Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, and in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. our Lord and Savior, to grow in His Word, and to exalt the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior. Hey, sing this again with us. Because when we see you, because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. What an encouragement that is. And in your presence, all our fears, they're washed away, washed away. recognize how great and awesome you are and Lord to praise and worship you what a privilege we have today just to exalt the name of Jesus Christ and to thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your greatness and so father as we sing that song Hosanna Lord we agree with the scriptures which just means to praise and bring adoration and to adore you who is our king who is the king of kings and the Lord of lords God, you are mighty, you are great, and we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, that not only have you extended to the grace and cross work of Jesus Christ, but Father, you continue to extend that grace to all of mankind today. Father, may we be encouraged by the worship, may we be challenged to grow through the word of God that we will hear from the teaching of the Bible later in the service. But Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. And it's Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Folks, you may be seated. We're going to take the offering for the moment. And so, hope that you are prepared and ready to give. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, just a little bit later in our service, we're going to welcome all of our guests. But for right now, we're going to take our offering for the service. And so, and our guys are getting in place, and we're so grateful for the opportunity to not only to worship with you, but also to grow in God's Word together. So thankful that you're here. And uh, if you're joining us for the first time, or if you're joining us by internet or listening by audio, thank you for being here as well. We just want to welcome you real quick. And thank you so much for being here. I would encourage you folks that as you give, and uh, for a record of your visit and attract uh, or giving and attract that, uh, if you uh, normally are giving and whether how however you give in check or cash or whatever that case may be, there is an envelope. If you'd like the privacy of that, there is an envelope in the back of every one of those seats in front of you that you can grab and you can close that up and put that in. I'd encourage you to do that. But thank you so much, church, for your faithfulness in giving and so and for your faithfulness in being in the service this morning. Well, we're grateful. Let's pray for the offering as we continue to worship. Father, we say thank you for your love and for your goodness. And God, we recognize that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, we can't outgive you. You are so gracious. You are so giving, God. The Bible expresses your heart and your love to us. But the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that 
he gave. God, you love us so much, you gave. And Lord, as we give, we give monetarily to you and unto your work because we love you. There, that's why we do it. We don't do it because we're forced to do it. We give it because we love you. And so, God, I just pray that your word today will be such an encouragement to many. It will challenge us to grow. And so, Lord, as we give, we just trust you. And we know that through our giving, so much more can be accomplished through the world, through missions, through outreach, and through ministries locally because of faithful giving. Lord, we praise your name this morning. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. While you're giving, we just ask that you remain seated and join us with this song. I love this. I'm so grateful that Christ has overcome. I'm so thankful for his powerfulness and his mightiness and that through the cross work of Jesus, sin can be overcame. Death and hell has been overcame through our risen Savior and Lord. This is a new song to our church. You've heard it before. Just simply entitled Overcome. I'm asked Paula to start us off. And in just a moment, you'll stand and join us. Oh! 
awesome. Jesus, awesome and power forever. Awesome and great is your name. For you overcame. Father, we just are so thankful that you have overcame. The Bible says where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Father, we know that there is no sin too great, no sin too small that your son Jesus can't cover. God, I thank you for the redemptive work that is only found through the person of Jesus Christ. He is the hope for all the world. He is the hope for this church. He is the hope for this community. He is the hope for our lives from day to day and tribulation and, and trials that may come. He is our hope. He is our peace. He is our comfort. He is our life. For you have overcome, God. There is no doubt where the victory comes from. And Lord, yes, there are days where we don't feel so victorious. And God, we don't feel like that we're more than conquerors, but... The truth is that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. It is not through us. It's not through our flesh. It's not through our energy, our efforts, or our own standards. It's only through the holiness and perfection of righteousness through our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the reason we've overcome. He is the only hope and life that we have. So Father, we just say thank you once again for your goodness, and for your mercy, and for your love. And it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. And what we'd like to do is welcome any guests that we have in our service. And so if you're a guest in our service, maybe this is your first time uh, or your first time in a long time. We're so glad that you're here. We don't take your visit with us or your uh, worship with us lightly today. We're so glad and thrilled that you're here. And if you're joining us by video or watching this or listening by audio, uh, just so thank you so much for being a part of our services and uh, taking your time to join one of our most recent services here at Freedom. And so if, uh, if you're ready to do this, we'd like to welcome any guests that are here. If this is your first time here and you don't mind raising your hand, would you go ahead and do that now? Raise up real high where our gentlemen can see you. God bless you way in the back and so thankful for you being here. Appreciate you folks being here today and uh, just so grateful to my left over there. Thank you uh, for finding them. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, church, I believe we can do just a little bit better job than that. Why don't we make everyone feel welcome this morning? God bless you. It's good to have you back there. You folks over there, God bless you. What a privilege and honor it is to have you in our... Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of prayer. Standing in the need of prayer. That's great. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to ask that you grab your Bible. Now, if you did not come to church this morning with a Bible, 
and you need a Bible. We want to help you with that. We have some Bibles that we are ready to give you. Uh, Brother Jerry and Brother Mike, can you guys help us? And uh, let's see if anyone needs a Bible. And uh, so if you need a Bible this morning, don't be embarrassed by raising your hand. Nothing is more important than you being in God's Word with us to follow along with us. So raise your hand real high if you need a Bible this morning. We'll bring it to you there in the back. God bless you. And uh, help us out there. Awesome. And uh, awesome over there. Anybody over here need a Bible? Everybody over here has got a Bible. Way in the back over there, you need one. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Brother Mike, to your left and to your right. Yep. Right across the aisle from you. To your right, Brother Mike, to your right. There you go. The other right. There you go. Aren't you glad you know your left from your right? Amen? And that'd be confusing. You wouldn't know which shoe to put on what foot. Amen? And I'm so thankful for knowing left to right. But I'm thankful for knowing God's Word this morning and that we can share in that together. So everyone should have a Bible. If your neighbor was a little embarrassed to raise their hand for a Bible... Listen, don't point them out. Don't make them feel uh, embarrassed or uncomfortable. But maybe you could share your Bible on your lap with them. Maybe you could share that. I think that would be something good this morning as we get in God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And uh, let's get in God's Word together. I want to make sure that everyone uh, is together. You know, Paul here is speaking about running the race. And of course we know uh, what this race is about. We've been studying it for a few weeks. But... What's amazing is that, you know, if, uh, if Bob Costas or Harry Carey or John Madden were to be announcing this sports event, they would have a lot to say according to this Olympic sport and the reference that the Apostle Paul is making. And we know that the Apostle Paul used illustrations in his preaching. We know that he often referred to a farmer. He often referred to a soldier. And here he is Uh, 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 mentioning and referring to an athlete. And these athletes were no strange thing to the day in which Paul lived. And Paul asked a question uh, in this verse or this chapter. And what's amazing is that he talks about running a race. So if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, I want you to know and look at these verses. He says in verse 19, he says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not uh, without the law, but under the law to Christ. He said a lot there, I'll clear all that up that I might gain them that are without the law. It can seem confusing here, but if you look up here, Paul is saying, look, there are Jews and there are Gentiles. There are people who think they're having to live by the law. There are some people saying that they don't have to live by the law because they're living under grace. And Paul is saying, yes, that is true. And yes, there is law. And yes, we've been freed from the law. But there are those who still think that they have to live by the law. And he's saying to the Jew, listen, uh, it's important for you to understand the program which you live under. And yes, we do not discount the law. It has its importance. But also those that live in grace and are under this grace that we live in today should not take their liberality or the liberty that they have in Christ and abuse it to those who are under the law. And it was clear that Paul was saying, listen, we all need to get on the same page that it's not about the law. It's not about liberty. It's about making sure that every person has the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and that every person has the opportunity to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And Paul says in verse 22, if you'd notice that, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. And I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Why would you do that, Paul? Verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Notice verse 24. He asked a question. 
Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Look up here, church. He says, listen, don't you know all those that run, run to receive a prize, and their answer collectively in that day would have been an astounding, yes, Paul, we know that. So let me ask you the question, and then you say yes as loud as you can. Church, don't you know that all those that run, run that they may win? Do you know it, Paul said. What's the answer? They were very familiar with the Olympic Games. They were very familiar with the uh, Olympic Games that were, uh, took place in Greece at this time. And they understood that the moment that Paul started talking about running, they tuned in because at this time, men and women uh, uh, chose to have children and put their children in and, and uh, sports events even at age of seven so that those boys and girls could know how to run and know how to compete and would become great athletes of the day. And so when Paul says, hey, all that run and race run that they may ob obtain and win a prize, and all of them immediately knew, man, I can identify with the race. And I'm going to tell you, all of us can identify with whether it's racing cars or uh, whether it's racing go-karts or motorcycles or if it's playing Uno or, or, or Go Fish or Old Maid, we all know that we play those things for one reason, and that is to win. And Paul was saying to you and I, there are certain things that you will win or lose at but there is one race that you can be in that there are no losers. The only losers are those that do not win or those that choose not to be in the race altogether. But everyone that will get in this race will win a prize. And I'm so thankful that Paul said in verse 24, Don't you know that all those that race run, but only one received the prize? And of course their answer was yes. Then notice Paul's emphasis and his command and his direct statement to them, So run that you may obtain. Church, I'm saying to you, listen, run the race. You don't need another message. You don't need another lesson on it. What you need to do is get up from your seat and go out in the community and all those that you rub elbows with and run the race for Jesus Christ. I mean, tell them about Jesus. Exalt the name of Jesus. Tell them God loves them. Tell them what God did for them. And if they get all weird about it, say, listen, I'm not trying to make you feel awkward. I'm just in a race. And I'm not in a race to beat you up the corporate ladder. I'm not in a race to beat you to, to Clarence's for lunch. I'm in a race to make sure that when I get to heaven, you'll be in heaven. I'm in the right race. I'm in the glory race. I'm in the grace race. I'm in the heaven race. I'm in the race to win souls. I want to make sure that you go to heaven when you die. And I'm saying to you folks that you can start putting a feat to your prayers and to your heart if you desire to win the greatest race of all. May I challenge you that after the service, go by the table in the lobby and sign up for Operation Bunny. Go by there and say, and by you signing up, you know what you're saying? You're saying, I want to be a part of it. Say, well, preacher, I can't come to the classes. The classes are on Sunday at 4.30. Most of us can come. That's why I didn't do it on a weekday or Saturday. Because most of us can come on Saturday or Sunday afternoon to those classes. And uh, I want you to go to the back lobby, to the table in the lobby and sign up for the evangelism classes that I'll be teaching. But then also make sure that you sign up for those outreaches that we're doing on those four Saturdays to go out and knock on doors. Say why? Because we're in a race to win lost people to Jesus Christ. Folks, let me tell you something. If we don't go knocking on the doors, if we don't go tell them about Jesus, then you tell me who will do it. I'll tell you who will do it. The Jehovah's Witnesses will do it. 
And there's probably not a door that's represented here, right in this church, that a door hasn't been knocked on by the Jehovah's Witness. And I'm saying to you that we got the only truth, we got the one truth, we got the one living God, we got the only way, the only life, the only truth, and that is Jesus Christ. We got the greatest message, the greatest race to ever run, to ever win, and yet we will sit in our sealed houses, we will attend our church services, but we won't walk across the street and go to our neighborhood and ask them, will you come to church? Do you know Jesus Christ your Savior? And I'm saying what Paul said, run that you may obtain. Church, it ain't time to sit. It ain't time to be quiet. It ain't time to just enjoy the show. It ain't time just to sit down and let someone else do it. I'm saying if you don't pray about it, if you won't get your feet up and put some tennis shoes on and do it, it won't get done. I'm saying it won't get done. Now, every one of you clapped. I expect to see you Saturday on those door-to-door. I don't say those things to get you clapping. I don't say those things to get your amen. I'm saying to you right now that, listen, uh, 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 I'm trying to get you encouraged and get you challenged and even get you burdened about the lost. Hey! Would you want someone to tell your little boy about Jesus? Would you want someone to tell your granddaughter, your grandson about Jesus? Hey, if your child was in the hospital sick and uh, they were out of town, would you want a pastor to go see him? Would you want a deacon to go see him? Would you want a church to go minister to him? I'm saying we can be that church in our community to say, hey, look, I don't know what your church background is. I don't even care what your denomination is. I'm saying we're here to knock on your door to invite you to our church to tell you you about a real living Christ and his name is Jesus that is all that we're here for we're not here to tell you about all the doctrines and all the events that we may have we want you to come to one thing and that is to our Easter services that you may be introduced to the real Savior man you can do that but I'm going to tell you right now, if you'll sit in the service with a lackadaisical attitude, and if you'll sit in the service right now while the preaching is going on and while the word is being taught, if you'll sit in the service and say, you know what, it's someone else's responsibility. i got other stuff to do. I'm going to tell you something, you'll never win that way. It reminds me of the boxer who was in the ring and he was literally getting just destroyed in the ring. And he went to his corner and he went to the coach and said, You know what? I'm going to throw in the towel. I can't win. I can't beat him. I, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm done. And, and, and his ring leader looked at him. His coach looked at him. He said, Listen, he says, There was one sure way that you won't win the fight. And that is to not go get in the fight. He says, The only way that you'll win is to get back in the ring and start fighting. And I'm saying to you, if you've been on the bench, get off the bench and get in the game. Get in the fight. There's a spiritual war going on. And you know as well as I do, if you have any inclination of what's going on in your nation, there are people in North Korea right now facing death and getting persecuted and even being getting executed for their stand for Jesus and for the cause of Christ. And we get all weird about and afraid someone will reject us in the United States and we won't even go across the room, but we'll forget about those of our brothers and sisters in foreign countries who will die for their faith. They'll go to the stake. They'll get their head cut off. They'll go to jail for Jesus Christ, but we won't walk across the street for Jesus I'm saying to you where is your burden church where is your burden do you have a burden for the lost do you care for the lost I want you to go out with me and knock on some doors and let's evangelize this community and it might be a shock to you to find out that you will knock on many doors where everybody goes to church, but no one goes to church. Did you hear me? Oh, I go to church. What church is it? Well, it's such and such, and such church. Listen, I had a lady tell me, uh, I was at a restaurant with one of our men in our church. We, we'd gone out, and uh, uh, we were at a restaurant, and one of the ladies uh, actually said, uh, you know what, I go to Freedom Baptist Church. And I said, oh, is that right? She goes, yeah. I said, who's the pastor there? And she named some other dude. And I said, do you like him? She says, yeah, I like him. And, uh, and the guy that was with me and said, so you know the pastor? She said, oh, yeah, I know the pastor. And I looked at him and I said, don't do it. <laughs> Remember that brother Charlie? 
Now, don't tell anybody about that. The lady had no idea who the pastor of this church was. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't care that people know who the pastor is. I just want to know, do they know who Jesus is? But I'm going to tell you, we can't take no for an answer. I believe we're asking the wrong questions. Where do you go to church faithfully is the right question. How often do you go? Are you faithful? Are you serving? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Do you know Him? That's what we're after. Listen, if you have a home church, if you're faithfully attended, we're not trying to get you to change churches. We're out here to proselytize you and get you to church hopping. We're trying to get you connected to a local church family because you love Jesus. You want to know Jesus more. And you want to grow in Jesus more. And you want to grow in Him so much that you will get compelled to go and do the same to others. And you will be the one next time knocking on the doors with us because someone knocked on your door. And Paul was saying, all those that run, run that they may obtain. So run. Run. I told you this last time, you know the context here is really twofold. And in your handout it says the reason for that is to proclaim the gospel and win people to Christ. In verse 19, uh, Paul said that I might gain the more. In verse 20, he says, and gain the Jews. And at the end of verse 20, he says that I might gain them that are under law. And then in verse uh, end of 21, he says that I might gain them that are without the law. Verse 22, he says that I might gain the weak. And then at the end of verse 22, he says that I do all of this by all means to save some. That word gain means the word win. That's where we get the word win from. It means to apprehend. It means to capture. It means to rescue. It means to save. And Paul says, I am after one thing, and that is to rescue those who do not know Jesus Christ. May I say to you this morning, there are a lot of hurting people in our church today. There are a lot of hurting people in our community. I don't know if it was C.T. Studd or William Booth made this statement that most people will build houses within a mile of church and church bells but he said may I desire to build a rescue church that's within the yard of hell and I'm saying to you that that's what the church ought to be it ought to be a place where lives are being rescued it's a place where people are being saved it's a place where people are being apprehended unto Jesus Christ not apprehended to the music not apprehended to the denomination but apprehended to Jesus Christ and to him alone that's the greatest race of all and Paul said I will want to run that race it's the same place in Matthew 4, 4, 19, where Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus did not sell the disciples, and he's not telling us that Jesus wants us to come to church so we can be keepers of the aquarium, so that we can be keepers of the fish, but that we'll be catchers, that we'll be rescuers, that we will be winning the loss to Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not interested in keeping the aquarium for Jesus Christ. I only want to win people to Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said. You know what? It's going to take you and I, though, doing some things. And in your handout, if we are going to win the greatest race of all, I told you last time, number one, it will take a heart that is sacrificial in giving. It will take a heart that's sacrificial in giving. In verses 14 through 18, Paul uh, lays on them uh, the heart of, of what's going on. And, and, and people were complaining about offerings and all of that. And Paul just basically laid all that aside and said, Look, there are needs of the ministry that need to be met. He says, but it's not going to come and stop me from preaching. It's not going to stop me from bringing the gospel to you. He says, and, and, and if you don't give, we'll find other ways to make sure it gets funded. He says, but I'm telling you that the gospel needs funding. And that the only way that the gospel will be funded is if people give sacrificially. 
I told you last time that there is a cost in getting the gospel to the lost. The Hessmans will be here with us in April. I believe it's April 13th, if I'm not mistaken. On Sunday night, Paul and Penny Hessman, who are missionaries to South America, South Africa, excuse me, may I say to you, they can't go to South Africa for nothing. Guess what? How many like lights on? Can I hear an amen? How many like for the water to run? Amen? Guess what? I'm sure the Hessmans do too. It takes Bibles to preach to the people. You got to have literature that's translated to give to the people. It takes literature, it takes tools, it takes resources like that. And I'm so thankful for the Hessmans, and I can't wait for you to hear them when they come here. They haven't been here in many, many, many years, and we've supported them for many, many years. But I'm going to tell you something. They will tell you and agree with you, me wholeheartedly, and from what the Bible says, that it takes people that are willing to give sacrificially so that they can go and give the gospel out. It's a cost. And I'm saying to you that when the church doesn't give or is not willing to sacrifice in giving, the cost of Christ is hindered. How many of you know and have heard, heard, heard this statement? And I want you to finish it for me. If it's too good to be true, then... How many have heard this statement? Nothing is... Have any of you ever been charged an minutes fee for coming to church here? Thank you. I hope none of you raised your hand. I'm like, who's doing that? Got to check our ushers and deacons, I guess. You know, we don't make a charge for the gospel. We don't make a charge. We do as many activities. Uh, we don't even charge people for the Juana Grand Prix. 50 cars raced in the, in, in the race for a Juana Grand Prix. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We made sure that if a kid couldn't afford a car, guess what? That we made sure they got a car. Why? Because the people of God gave so that they could race. Guess what? It's going to take the people of God giving to the work of God so we can go out and race for God. That's what it's going to take. And I'm saying to you that when we don't give sacrificially, the cause of Christ is hindered. There are those of you that give faithfully and you can't give anymore. May I say to you from my heart to your heart, don't stop giving. Keep it up. Keep doing it. Keep raising the banner. Keep giving systematically. Keep giving faithfully week to week. Hey, thank you for supporting the work of the Lord. But may I speak to another group? Those that, of you that give rarely or give very little, listen, may I say to you, may I challenge your heart, and may I encourage you to get on board with what God is doing. May I challenge you to allow this to get in your heart and burden that the cause of Christ is hindered if you don't choose to be sacrificially giving unto the work of the Lord. May I say to a third group, there are those of you that maybe don't give at all. You haven't given a dime to the ministry. You don't give to anything. You don't give to Awana. You don't give to VBS. You don't give to the teens. You don't give to anything. You aren't giving to the church or the work of God at all. May I say to you and challenge you from my heart to your heart and from God's word, hey, listen, why don't you start giving? You can start somewhere. You can start giving somehow, some way. So if you're giving and you're giving faithfully, amen, praise the Lord, don't stop. If you're giving very little and it's just kind of occasional, but you're not very faithful on it, may I say to you, get faithful. And if it's one of you that aren't giving at all, may I challenge you right now, hey, get on board, get involved, and give sacrificially. Number two, not only does it take a heart that's sacrificial in giving, but it will take a heart that's willing to serve others. We dealt with this last time, and uh, I, I want to speed forward very quickly. I, I want you to know this, that when Paul is talking about, as, as, a, Jew, uh, as a Jew, I became as a Jew, and he, he says, you know what? I do all of this to reach people for Jesus Christ. He says, I don't want to be offensive. If there's someone who doesn't want to eat pork, I won't eat pork. If there's someone who serves pork, and it's going to offend them if I don't eat the meal, I'll eat it even though I don't want to eat it or don't really like it. Say, well, we're not under dietary laws today, preacher. I understand that, and I'm not talking about di dietary laws. I'm not talking about a Nazarite vow. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about as a 
spiritual application today. Listen, we shouldn't do anything that would offend someone and to turn them off from giving us the opportunity to hear the gospel clearly. Listen, if you go to someone's house and, and you just are hard nosed about it and you're, you're, you, you, you start rebuking them on their front door and you start telling them that their hair is too long and that they need to dress appropriately before they come to our church, if you start laying down all these preferences that you have, guess what? You're going to shut that door for us to go back to that door in the future. Matter of fact, they won't open the door at all for us when we come. And Paul is saying, don't shut the door. Leave the door open, if you would. Lay aside your preferences and make sure it's biblical of what you're talking about. You know, we answered this question last time. Why would someone like Paul or you or me use their talents and treasures and, and, and time to serve others? What's well, very simple. In your handout, it says, you do it as unto the Lord for the advancement of of the gospel. The bottom line is he wanted to win the race for lost souls. Why do you do what you do? Hey, listen. Why do you do what you do? Paul said in Galatians 1.10, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Say, why should I sign up for the uh, evangelism classes to serve Jesus Christ? Why should I go out and knock on doors? Because you asked me to, preacher? Oh, please don't do it for the preacher. Hey, do it to please your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a greater purpose here than the pastor. There's a greater uh, 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 meaning than the pastor here there's a greater thing and reward ahead than what the pastor says it's to win people unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hey do you seek to please men or do you seek to please God I want you to know that if you win souls to Christ you are pleasing your Savior that is why you should do it that is why I want you to remember this when we talk about serving others in your handout this is something new for you. I don't believe you have written this in yet. Remember this. When you are serving others, you are serving Christ. When you are serving others, you are serving Christ. You are serving Jesus. Listen, the next time you sign up to do something around this church... Whether it's VBS, it's a want, it's to usher, it's to even cut the grass, or it's to vacuum the floor, or it's to serve in children's ministry that's going on right now. It's to serve in the nursery with my wife. It's to make a cake for our teen fundraiser, or, or, or it's to attend the Titus Two Women, or, or, or you're going to sign up and give something to the Hesmans by way of gift. Listen, whatever you do, would you do it as unto the Lord? The Bible says in Colossians 3.23, And whatsoever ye do... Do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. I'm going to tell you something. I wouldn't do anything for the church, but I'd do it all for Jesus. Did you hear me, church? Don't do it for Freedom Baptist Church. Hey, do it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Do it for Him. Do it for Him. I have found this. Those that do it for men don't last. They quit. Those that do it because someone asked them as a big favor or whatever. I'm going to tell you something. Those usually don't last and they end up quitting. They get discouraged. I'm going to tell you why they get discouraged. Someone didn't thank them enough. Someone didn't pat them enough on the back or whatever the case may be. Listen, we're all that way. We all want to be liked. We all want to be accepted. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm accepted in Jesus Christ. It doesn't really matter if you accept me or not. And I want to be accepted. I don't know anybody that walks around and doesn't want to be accepted. But I'm saying when it comes to serving others, you must do it. You can only do it with serving as a heart unto Jesus Christ. Are you willing to adjust your lifestyle to do it though? Some of you have busied your life so much, you have busied Jesus right on out. You can barely get to church because you're so busy. Have you busied your life out so much? I mean, are you willing to adjust your lifestyle for the cause of Jesus Christ? Paul says, as unto the Jews, I became a Jew. I will set my lifestyle aside if I get a chance to talk to that Jew. I will set my, uh, 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 my certain... Um, uh, preferences aside 
I don't want pork. But, but if it's someone that brings pork, I, I'll eat it so I don't offend them, Paul was saying. Now, I don't know if Paul uh, ate pork or not, but being that he was a Jew, he may not have. Are you willing to set your preferences aside in order to win someone? They may not look like you. They may have earrings through their nose, through their ears, through their neck. They may have it all up and down, upside down. They may have tattoos from head to toe. But I'm going to tell you something. That should not ever turn you off from telling that person that Jesus loves them. Jesus loves that earring in your head just like he loves the hair on your back. Amen. Jesus loves it all. He loves you. God isn't interested in those things. That is a personal preference of every individual. And I'm saying to you, all that stuff has to be laid aside so that we can serve others and win people to Jesus. Are you willing to lay aside your habits, your habits to reach the laws? That means you may have to give up a soccer game. That means you may have to give up a certain hobby. You may have to negate the golf game uh, to go knock on a few doors. Say, what's it all about? In your handout, the bottom line is that Paul was willing to, willing to make himself a servant to others that he might win them to Christ. Paul was willing to make himself a servant to others that he might win them to Christ. Will you avail yourself to serve others this week in order that you may win them to Christ? I'm going to tell you, I think that God gives us opportunities every day and through the week to serve others, and we ignore it. We had a neighbor who couldn't get out of their driveway. And this person needed to get to work. They need a job. And this person comes from a northern state, so you'd figure that they'd know how to drive in the snow. But they were stuck in their driveway, and they got mouths to feed. Now, I'll be honest with you. They're not even like our faith. They're opposite of our faith. But I'm going to tell you something. We sure did have a good time with them. We started chucking snowballs at them. Then we had one of the best snowball fights you've ever seen. Then after all that was over with, I said, hey, let me get that car out of your driveway so you can get to work. I said, what's it all about? He won't ever forget me helping him get his car out of the driveway. So the next time I have a conversation with him about church, he'll be open to that. Why? Because I just served him. He'll see me as a friend, not as an opposition. Not one who's trying to shove something down his throat, but trying to win him to our Savior. So that's kind of simple. I know. But I'm saying it's just an opportunity to serve someone. I'm saying that God probably puts in your life each and every week the opportunity for you just to do something with somebody that you don't even know. We didn't know these neighbors until then. The first encounter that we had with them was a snowball fight. They built some snowman. We walked by it and they hurled a snowball. I said, let's rally the troops. It's on. And man, it was every man for himself. It was the best time ever. And we got to learn why they're in our community and what brought them here. You know what I come to find out? They struggle just like everyone else. They're trying to make ends meet just like everyone else. Say, what do you think they need? Well, first of all, I think they need Jesus. Number two, I think they need somebody to care. They need a neighbor who cares. Good night, I can throw a snowball, snowball and hit their house. Shouldn't I care about those that are closest to me? Shouldn't you? 
So we're Peter, I can't go get anybody out of the snow. It ain't about getting someone out of the snow. Some of you, I said this a couple weeks ago about Facebook and all of that and Twitter, and some of you responded incredible. And I want to say to you, thank you for listening to your pastor. But may I give you a little bit of instruction because a lot of questions came up about that and, and, and people didn't know what really how to do it. But I think it's interesting that there is a difference between sharing and liking on Facebook. So preacher, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Well, hang on. You know that you just liking our Facebook or Twitter doesn't get the word out. It just puts it on your thing, on your Facebook or page. But when you share it, it goes out. And I'm saying to you, the same is true. You can like the Bible all you want to. You can like church. You can like Jesus all you want to. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm asking you to share it. We like a lot of things. But here's what I have found out in my life, and I guarantee it's true in your life. What I'm passionate about, I usually end up doing. What I'm passionate about, I usually end up supporting. What I'm passionate about, I usually end up sharing. What I'm passionate about, I usually end up doing, thinking about, talking about, sleeping about it, and, and just it, it, involving my thoughts all about it if I'm passionate about it. And I'm saying if you're passionate about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not only will you sacrificially give, but you won't have a problem at all serving others through Jesus Christ. Why? You're passionate about it. And if there's one thing our community needs, is the passion of Jesus Christ in it. Our community needs to know who Jesus is. And forget about all the hoopla and all that other stuff, and everybody wants to divide, and everybody wants to figure out who's on the left and who's on the right. Let me tell you something. I'm not on the left or right. I'm just with Jesus. And I'm one who's in Christ. I'm a Christian. And I want to be a follower of Him. And I'm inviting you to do the same.